Hey guys, welcome to Surface Travels. We're here at Flagler College. Um, it was Henry Flagler's flagship hotel back in the early 1900s. And today it's a college and we're gonna go take a tour. It's supposed to be spectacular. When it was a hotel, it was a hotel that you practically had to be invited to stay. And when you came, you, stay, you came for the winter season, which was December through March. So it's absolutely a must see place. Um, the president stayed here. It was one of the first hotels to have electricity. It was electrified by Thomas Edison. So we're going to take the tour and we're going to take you along with us. So come on. This is Flagler College, also known as the Hotel Ponce de Leon. It was built by Henry Flagler. It's one of the first poured concrete buildings ever. Here's old Henry himself right here. Henry was very big in hotels. He built, he ended up owning three of them in this city, going through the gates. This was his flagship, the hotel that everybody wanted to stay at. Today this is Flagler College. It's been a college since the 50s. It was originally a women's college, but now it's co-ed. And we're going to take the 10 a.m. tour. So come along, if you dare. There you are. Hello. And so just a few rules before we head into the dining hall, which will be our first stop for today. So the big dining hall, there's going to be students dining there, but please ask, do not go into the kitchen alcoves. Trust me when I say that you're not missing out on anything. <laughs> Just make sure you don't go in those areas. Also make sure that you do not go into the private dining rooms. Secondly, we will actually not be going up this grand staircase here. We're actually going to be going up Henry Flagler's VIP entrance. Just make sure that you do not touch the Tiffany stained glass. We are held liable for everything you guys do here today and I would love to graduate. So let's just make it a good time for both of us. All right, so let's head over to the dining hall. So you did just walk through Henry Flagler's VIP entrance, only he would be allowed to use that entrance. And so it will actually be featuring a leather staircase because Henry Flagler did not want to scuff his leather shoes when he would come to dine here. So one thing I do want to mention in this room will be a Spanish theme. We do have all 50 Spanish provinces in the year of 1887 in this building. You'll see part of the part of the Spanish provinces in this room as well as in the rotunda. So you will notice that the Spanish provinces here, if you start with Valencia over to my left, you'll also notice that there will be coats of arms by each Spanish province. And that will be a continuation in the other alcove over there. You will also notice this rectangle right above you. Thank you. 
Winter Park, Florida, but all of those pieces will be taken from their original homes. None of the pieces in this building have ever moved. And you will notice that places that do have colors, and you'll also notice these windows here, they actually aren't going to be as vibrant as some of the other pieces you'll find from uh, behind that is that back then Tiffany was still perfecting his stained glass technique. So this was actually going to be one of the first pieces he had ever created. Alright guys, so when Henry Flagler was building this hotel, he stuck with a couple of themes. The first one you're going to see a lot of is the Spanish theme. There's also a religious theme and an audible theme. So if you look above you, as Natalia mentioned earlier, you're going to see the different Spanish provinces. And all throughout this room, you are going to see all 50 of the Spanish provinces will be listed somewhere in the series. And the second is going to be a religious theme, and the third is going to be an auto theme. So when you guys have the chance to go and walk around the room and see everything, you're going to see some Spanish galleons over here. You're also going to see some mermaids, some fish, and some sea creatures. So that is going to be all throughout the ceiling. And then also you're going to recognize two balconies over here. So a lot of people ask me who this balcony is. Presidential suite, or just you know, like a flower with a. And the answer is no. That was actually used for orchestras. So when they would have balls and parties and dinners here, no one would like the awkward silence of the transition between songs. So they would have the orchestras in place at one time. So when one song, when one orchestra was playing a song, the other was getting set up and ready to go. So there was no awkward flipping of the pages or getting their instruments ready. It was constant all of the time. And lastly, I want to mention, is there anything you guys see missing from the ceiling or from the room in general? Exactly. They're missing a chandelier. So, when this place opened as a hotel, they kind of forgot to throw in a chandelier, so they threw something together last minute. And it honestly was not the most aesthetic pleasing. It kind of looked more like a wagon wheel or a giant hoop skirt with some vines and flowers that Around it. it looked like something you'd see more at, you know, like an outdoor, like country themed way as opposed to something like this. So a lot of guests complained about it. They didn't let it. They said it was an eyesore, it was too low to the ground, that they were in danger of hitting their head and all of that. So it was then removed, and now all we have are these little light bulbs up there. A little bit more about what it was like for guests to stay here at the time, but I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about the artwork in here as well. So this did complete construction in 1887 and opened as a functioning hotel in 1888. Guests did stay here for four seasons at a time. It was a seasonal hotel. So they would get here around late December and stay until early April. So when guests would arrive, Henry Flagg would design this to be the first thing they see when they arrived here in St. Augustine. So guests would get off at the Florida East Coast Railway behind the Light Museum. The Florida East Coast Railway Station is no longer present there anymore. And a carriage would be waiting for them. They would go down Cordova Street and back up through our breezeway, come up, and they would look up and see this. So I have also had people ask me, well, why did they take a carriage instead of walking through the courtyard? It's because most of the time they would arrive here at night and they would not want to cro walk across the street at night. So there would be, there would be, I guess, because they have a transportation system ready for them. So, when you look up, we're going to go down in different layers. So, Natalia mentioned earlier that if you guys look up over there at that round piece of stained glass, as I mentioned earlier, we have the largest indoor privately owned collection of Tiffany stained glass. And that was the last piece of Tiffany glass to be put in place at the hotel, but also just the last piece to be put in the hotel in general. And you remember how I mentioned earlier that the paintings all inside the um, dining hall over there were designed by a man named George W. Maynard. Well, he designed this as well. So when Henry Flagler hired George W. Maynard to paint everything here, design all of the beautiful intricacies you see, Henry Flagler said, do not put your signature on any of your artwork. And being the artist he was, he decided, he thought to himself, are you kidding? <laughs> so what he did, he decided very sneaky, very subtle about it. He did actually sign his work. You can't really see it from this angle, and it was very smart of him because gas and Henry Flagler see it. But in the neckline of this lady's dress here, the blue, it does say Maynard 19, I'm sorry, 1887. So he was able to sneak his signature in there a little bit. So, and then I also want to mention this is a seasonal resort again. So does anybody want to guess how much it cost per guest at the time? Anyone? I'm sorry? 
Mm-mm. Anyone else? $100. No, it was $4,000 per guest per season, which in today's money is approximately $100,000. Yeah, that's quite a price tag. And back then, they did not have any Venmo, credit cards, checks. Everything was in cold, hard cash. So when guests would come and check in, the males would go over and the male guests would go over and check in, where the female guests would go over and sit in the ladies' parlor. And they did this because there was this ridiculous theory back in the day that if women saw that much cash, they would faint, pass out, vomit, grow up, <laughs> something like that. So we're going to show you guys that in a little bit, but that was where the ladies' parlor was at the time. So after guests were done checking in, they would be shown up to their rooms. But that's all I have to say about the lobby. There are about 400 different rooms here. So we could house about 800, probably about like 800 to 1,000 guests at a time. And all the guests that were staying here were celebrities or A-list celebrities, politicians, millionaires, basically the top, the tip top of society that would stay here. And when they were staying here, they were constantly dressed to the nines and would probably change outfits about three times a day. They would have day wear, they would have what they would wear to lunch and what they would wear to dinner and if there was a ball going on and what they would wear to ball. And also, just wanted to mention fun fact, we got, we got electricity three years before the lighthouse. We started with direct current and then eventually changed to alternating current. But we have a little story of behind why direct current was maybe not the best idea. So did you guys see the dragons above me? So that was used as a pseudo security system back in the day. They had red light bulbs in their mouth. So when the sun would set, the lights would give off a scary vibe to kind of keep away any unwanted visitors or people who were not guests. However, with direct current, the light bulbs would pop one by one by one by one by one, giving the effect of a fire-breathing dragon, which is cool but not very safe. So when they switched it back. So when they switched to alternating current instead of direct current, they did not put those light bulbs back in place. I don't know why, maybe it was just, well, we don't want this to happen again. But, um, see the dragon alternating current. Oh, also, I do remember someone asked me, did Henry, was Henry Flagler the architect behind this? Henry Flagler was not an architect, nor was he a designer. He hired two men by the name of John Career and Thomas Hastings. They were right out of college and they designed this building and the Lightning Museum across the street as well as the Alexander Hotel. After they completed their design and construction of these two buildings, they went on to build another 600 buildings, including the New York Library. No pressure for me being right out of college, right? <laughs> Another thing I do want to mention will be the shade of blue on the ceiling. So can any of you guess as to perhaps which shade of blue is on the ceiling? Just shout it out. I heard it, Tiffany. Yeah, so this will actually be the original Tiffany blue. So back then when this building was in its construction, Tiffany had not yet perfected his blue. But Henry Flagler said, what every have available at the time is fine with me. So this was the first time that ha uh, Tiffany allowed his blue to be featured in any building. And so when he did put this up, they were actually not able to match the shade of blue. So it is the original Tiffany blue, but the blue we know and love today will actually be a little bit greener. And when students are allowed to come in here because it's a very occasion event if that does happen, they do like to say that they are standing in the first and largest Tiffany box in the world. I think that's pretty cool too. So if you look just right behind me, there's this clock. This clock will be a Thomas Edison original. You'll notice that it is a, an original because on the fourth hour it has four I's instead of IV. Another thing to note is that it is sitting on the largest piece of white onyx in the Western Hemisphere. And with all that being said, it is a semi-functioning clock, <laughs> meaning that it times to, tells time correctly twice a day. <laughs> it's a little broken. And if we were to try 
and fix it, well, there'd be a few issues. So if we were to try and fix it from the front, we could risk losing the originality of Thomas Edison's creation. But if we were to try and fix it from behind, we could risk breaking the largest piece of white onyx in the Western Hemisphere. So with that being said, we're okay with calling it semi-functioning. Perhaps one day we come in, it's magically fixed, but for now, it'll just stay as it is. And the final object I do want to mention in this room will actually be the seating arrangement we have over in this cabinet here. So it is a three-seater chair. You'll be able to get a closer look of it when you are able to walk around. But this chair was, would be called a courting chair. So be, there would be one seat for the person being courted. There would be a seat for the man courting the woman. And finally, the third seat would belong to a chaperone to make sure that no shenanigans are happening. So that's a little story about the objects in this room. All right, so that again does conclude our tour. Thank you so much for taking our tour. If you did like the tour, my name's Natalia. My name is Claire. You can leave us a comment. We do have a comment box outside of our gift shop. We also do have a TripAdvisor page. However, if you did not like the tour, then my name is Mary Lily Keenan. <laughs> my name is Henry Morrison Block. <laughs> <laughs> So what'd you think? I thought I, the architecture was magnificent. All the, I mean, for it to be all hand carved and everything. Yeah, the stained glass. The, yeah, uh, the stained glass was Mosaic beautiful. tile floors. Mm -hmm. the Tiffany blue ceiling. And the chandeliers. Yeah. Yeah, just magnificent. Very, very good tour. Very okay. much worth the ten dollars. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Definitely. And that about an hour long. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very nice tour. Yeah. Hi everybody. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll be notified when we post future videos. Thank you very much, and we will see you down the road. Bye everybody.